Like an open necklace, California's 21 historic Spanish missions spread along an 824-mile trail from San Diego to Sonoma along El Camino Real. Over a period of 300 years between 1523 and 1823, the Spanish missions were established from Guatemala in Central America through Mexico and 11 current U.S. states. Padre Junipera Serra of the Order of the Franciscan Friars was pronounced president of the missions of Lower and Upper California in 1767. In 1749, Sarah and Padre Francisco Palau left Spain with a missionary team and landed in Veracruz, New Spain, walking all the way to Mexico City. Palau was a philosophy student of Sarah's at the Convento de San Francisco in the men's homeland of Majorca, Spain. Sarah trained at the College of San Fernando de Mexico. In less than a year, he volunteered to go to a rugged mountainous area mission in Sierra Gordo, Mexico with Palau as his assistant. Palau would become Sarah's first biographer. At age 55, Sarah left a mission in Loreto, Baja California with Commander Portalo to establish Franciscan missions along the coast in Alta, California. In 1906, decorative bronze mission bells were placed along the historic El Camino Real. For Padre Sarah, this was the northern terminus of El Camino Real that he helped blaze. The southernmost mission is San Diego de Acala, and the northern most mission is San Francisco Solano. To visit them all would be a rewarding long distance haul and definitely is in my plans. The missions as seen today do not reflect the rural and agricultural nature of their original identity. They were established to proselytize the Indian culture and create vast livestock and farming centers to sustain the church leadership and neophytes, which are Indian converts. California agriculture was born at these missions with the state's first citrus trees, olive groves, and vineyards planted at them, meaning their gardens are not only gorgeous but historical too. San Juan Capistrano in this photo and Mission Dolores were the only two churches to remain intact through the decades of secularization. There will be videos on each of these fabulous missions explaining more and showing you more of the beautiful architecture and grounds. You won't want to miss those. Have you hit the subscribe button yet? Between 1834 and the turn of the 20th century, most of the properties fell into tremendous disrepair or were totally destroyed. Many people have undergone great tasks to restore these valuable gems to a pristine appearance, recognizing their historic significance. The missions, charm, and architecture are compelling. The Catholic missions do not accept federal or state funding. Some charge an entrance fee, while others ask for donations. Don't forget to subscribe, and while you're at it, hit the thumbs up.